I love watching that number of all our participants coming in. Should we be on mute? Like I mean, if you have a lot of background noise, you can, but. Okay. I just quiet. It. it sounds good so far. It sounds really good, so. A small child and a dog, I'm not gonna leave it. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Abby, we don't risk it with you. <laughs> Small child. <laughs> oh, here we go. Oh, a lot of names that I haven't seen in a while. Ethel already has her hand up. Ethel, if you have a question, you could put in the chat. You might accidentally have your hand up, though. Ethel just joined Flower Click, actually. Oh. Hey, that's a new member. Hey, how exciting! Yeah. I meet oh. with her later this week. I see, where did I see? Oh, I see John Frecker. I did get your voicemail today. I will, I saw that you scheduled my calendar too. So I'll talk to you tomorrow. Sorry, John is in that time zone that I can never remember. It's like an hour and a half later than Eastern time. And so we're constantly crossing paths. You mean mm -hmm. earlier than Eastern time? Is it earlier? I thought it was later. I thought it was later. You're just proving your point, Lori. <laughs> <laughs> that I don't know what it is. Yeah. <laughs> somewhere on the very point of <laughs> Canada, somewhere, it's an hour and a half, which makes no sense to me. I didn't even know that was a thing. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Ellie. <laughs> Thank you for your support. I'm not me and Audrey. <laughs> Seven. I think he lives in like a storybook like town though. Yes. I remember him. Yes, Jelly Bean one. Row. Jelly Jelly Bean. Yeah. Nova All Scotia. Is that where he is? Where? Nova Scotia? Yes. Somewhere around there. He's, He's probably listening, saying you guys are getting it all wrong. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Give it one more minute. Sounds like it's a good thing we're in flower sales and not in logistics. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I would not, not be good. St. John's. I figured it out. St. John's, John's Newfoundland. <laughs> New St. John's John. Newfoundland. <laughs> yes. With yep, that's it. I don't know. I think, Scott, you and Mike and Amy do a lot of logistics. You yeah. A yes. lot of logistics. Unfortunately, you're correct. And it's pretty it's true. getting more and more difficult. Ugh. All right, well, let's, you want to go ahead and get started, Vonda? Sure. Okay. Let's Let do it, Lori. Okay. Share I'm, your screen there. I'm getting, yep, here we go. How's that? There we got it. All right. Awesome. So we, first off, Thank you, everyone, for coming. It's been um, one of those that we are starting to decompress from Valentine's Day. We want to forget about it and move forward, right? But there's so many lessons we can learn from what has happened this Valentine's Day that we can use to move forward to Mother's Day. So we appreciate all of you on the panel as well to be to give us your time and efforts to help spread the message of you know what can be done to improve next time. Yep. So let's, you know, before we start, let's do a quick um, introduction, Lori. All right, go right ahead. Okay, let's start with Amy. Amy Desperado, she works for Natural Farm. She's director of mass marketing. She's that farm connection with, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but 28 years on the team for Natural Flowers. So welcome, Amy. Let's go to Scott Jewett. And Scott is the manager of the San Antonio, Texas location of the Billborn Company. He also oversees the Texas Billborn branch locations. So as you will see, he's traveling from one back to his house, I think, tonight. Um, <laughs> Next, we have Mike Bentley, who is a manager at the Albany, New York store, who has recently merged two locations, had a lot going on there, and I'm sure it was kind of a great day for that. Mike is a recent TV star because I saw a lot of clips with him on the local news for Valentine's Day, too. Mm -hmm. So 
we know the importance of the wholesaler and the growers during the holiday season. So we're really excited that the three of you are joining us, but also Lori, our own Flower Click team. Yes, so if this is your first time to attend a webinar, uh, we are Flower Click. There's a whole, this is Vonda Ellie, myself, Audrey, and Cami Martin. Um, we do have others that are behind the scenes. They, just because their pictures aren't here does not mean they are not integral parts of this, of this program. Um, but we are gonna be kind of the facilitators today. The other people on our uh, round table today are four of our Flower Click members. Well, actually three, one is out sick and she's very sad she can't be here. That would be Tracy. Um, so Abby Chick, she owns Blakemore Flowers in Harrisonburg, Virginia. We've had Jeannie Myers, Town and Country Flowers and Gifts in Huntington, Indiana. And then Julia Cree from Tacoma Buds and Blooms in Tacoma, Washington. So I just wanna welcome all three of you ladies. We are so grateful that you're taking time out of your crazy days to be here. Glad to be here. Thank you for having us. So, so those are all the introductions. And I think now, Ellie, if you wouldn't mind, why don't you take it from here? Yes, thanks, Lori. I'm just going to be asking the, the hard questions and having you guys answer. Um, and I'm going to go in order grower, uh, also Amy, and then Mike and Scott, and then asking the ladies, um, the retail shop owners. So the first question is just what was your overview of Valentine's Day 2022? How do you feel? leaving it behind and your gut feelings, all of that. So Amy, what is your, what's your thoughts? Well, I'm glad it's over. And I think everybody would agree with me. I think it was a very long holiday. Uh, I felt like I started it um, preparations and organization much earlier than I usually do. And it went right till the 13th and 14th and 15th. Um, we're just kind of trying to wrap it up, obviously the end of the month now, but, but when you prep a farm for a major holiday, there's a lot of people and a lot of organization that goes into it. And we really tried to be organized, especially with what I felt was a very disorganized mother's day and a very disorganized last Valentine's day. So we spent a lot of time and energy getting people in the right places to have, um, an organized, logistically organized holiday. And yes, the wholesalers and the suppliers do do a lot of logistics. Um, as far as product quality, um, I'm used to at our farm, less than a half of a half percent of credits and quality issues. And unfortunately that never hold, holds true for a major holiday, but you know, we're pushing close to eight times Amy, I think we lost you. Should we move on? Yeah, I think okay. she's probably in a bad area, so maybe move yeah, on. Yeah, we can come back to her. Uh, Mike, what about you first? Sure, so um, I'll, I'll second uh, what Amy was saying a little bit about uh, preparation and, and uh, it being a long holiday, I think we started preparing for this back in November, which uh, quite honestly was, was probably a really good thing uh, for us. Um, I had wrote down two words. Uh, first one that came to mind was smooth. So I think because of our preparation uh, early on, uh, we wound up with a really smooth holiday. Uh, you know, uh, certain things are always out of our control. Some of the logistics can be out of our control, but even even taking that into account, it was a really, probably one of the smoothest we've seen. Um, likewise, sales for us were strong. Uh, we had a really strong early pre-book, which I think was important. We came out ahead of uh, most of our competition, uh, locked up a lot of uh, orders early on, uh, knowing full well that product was gonna become scarce the closer we got to the holidays. So. Uh, the sense here on the marketplace was that uh, retailers had a really strong holiday as well. Uh, a lot of that too was evidenced by post V-Day sales for us. So like the 15th through the 18th were really kind of strong after holiday sales for us here. So 
I think all the way around, it was a pretty positive, uh, positive holiday. Awesome. Scott, anything to add? I, I would agree with, with Mike's statements. It was a very, very solid holiday uh, across the board. As a matter of fact, uh, Bill was sharing the other day that every one of the locations uh, of the Bill Doran company were up in sales for the Valentine's Day season this year, uh, which I think is probably one of the first times in years that every location was up. Uh, again, we faced a lot of the same challenges, and I, I agree with Mike. We did our first early bird pre-book in late November, 1st of December had a very, very strong showing of that. And I'm a firm believer that if you get your customers, what we call donkey nodding early and, and um, uh, taking a bite on that early bird pre-book, then it just helps set the tone for the whole season. And it allows us to prepare uh, to prepare for success for our retail customers by those early pre-books. We already kind of get a feel of what they're looking for. Uh, as far as product quality for for the Bill Doran company uh, in, in, in the San Antonio market, particularly, it was very strong for us. Um, our, our credits were, I mean, we had a few little suspects here and there, but other than that, it was a very, very strong um, uh, product quality wise. Uh, but I think part of that is because a lot of the farms were, were having to cut as the product was becoming available. They couldn't cut earlier and work ahead and do some of those things just because of the product shortages, the logistical challenges and the employment shortages that we're all suffering from uh, post COVID. So all in all, I would say it was a very strong holiday and we too had had post holiday sales that have been very strong. So I'm really excited about moving forward into wedding seasons and Mother's Day upcoming. Awesome. Amy, I'm gonna circle back to you quick. You mentioned, you are talking about product quality um and credits and all of that did you have something else to add there it, can you hear me now Could, yeah. yeah okay um i just think it's very difficult to ask a, or expect a farm to have the same quality perfection that we do every single week during a holiday when we have so much extra to deal with mm -hmm. so that's always hard for me because I, I think we all work hard to organize to be perfect. And when it's not perfect, you feel like you failed, although you did the best you could. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. Okay, ladies, uh, I'm going to go to you first, Jeannie. Sure. We had a great holiday. Um, and like these people before me, we start right after Christmas organizing, getting our inspiration board and getting everything ready for our clients so that when they walk in our door at the end of January, we're ready for them. Um, our holiday was great. Um, this is my second year with Flower Click and we were up 23% this year over last. And the really awesome thing about that is we were up 18% last year. So to have those kind of numbers um, is pretty awesome for us. Um, we had really good product coming in, so we were very blessed there. Um, and we had good weather. We can That can drive our business. Um, we had snow on the 3rd and 4th of February, and um, we were really worried a snowstorm can kill a holiday for us. Uh, but we had good weather, um, and so we were, we were very blessed with the numbers that came in, the clients who came in, and we were selling big arrangements, and it was due to our website. Um, and the awesome, you know, website that Flower Click provides for us. Awesome. Julia, go to you next. Yeah, um, you know, it was um, as expected. Um, it was kind of like what Mike said, it was kind of smooth going. Um, we had a snowstorm last year. So this year we had um, great weather as well. So everything was uh, worked out wonderful. And um, um, we were pretty well prepared. You know, we start planning ahead and doing all the prep work. And I think it being on a Monday, I felt like we had a whole week plus an extra weekend to prepare. So, um, and we had a lot of pre-book, like people choosing early delivery almost kind of reminded me more of a Mother's Day. We had a lot of deliveries going out Thursday and Friday. Um, so that helped out um, help things go really smoothly too. Great. And Miss Abby, what about you? 
It was awful. No, it was <laughs> That just, is a lie, because I just talked to you. <laughs> no, I, um, no matter how good you're doing, I think as a business owner, you're like, sort of like right on the edge of panic at any moment, like, because it's the house of cards that like, it could go wrong. And as I was planning, just like the other ladies, I mean, it starts January 1. Sometimes it starts Christmas Eve for me if I get my pre-book from my wholesalers, you know, but um, we just had so many random obstacles this year in front of us that I couldn't have prepared for. But one thing that I was afraid that could happen actually did happen. Um, so I actually got, I got COVID like three weeks before Valentine's Day and my, two of my other employees had gotten it right before me. So it was like from Christmas to, it was a domino effect. And like, we actually, none of us spread it to each other. It just was a thing where it was taking us out one by one. And while I am a owner who like works the bench, you know, like I'm right there in it, I would call my my second in command, I would call her my lead designer because she pumps out the arrangements all day. She is like my main producer while I'm wearing all the hats. And 10 days out from Valentine's Day, she called me and she said, my husband's got it. And I knew I, that it was the biggest fear that I had was my main producer is going to be taken out. And she was. And I like panicked for a hot minute. I was like, wait a minute, do I call my wholesalers and ask them to like not send half of my product? And I was like, no, man, you prepared for this. You know how to have your girls assembly line. You know what needs to happen. And you also didn't, I didn't raise my numbers from last year's sales, knowing that this year would be more. I sort of accounted for what if half my staff is sick. And I ordered very closely to what I did last year. Um, and I, I stuck to my guns about, it. I said, we're going to do 20 dozen roses and that's it. And when I sell, when I hit that number, I made projections on every single special that we had. And when we hit that number, Cami, how many emails do you get from me a day? <laughs> yeah, you, you definitely paid for your membership. <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm like, 415, renewal sold out. Email Cammy. Like, <laughs> I want it gone. Like, I live and die by my projections when it comes to not having to like over order product. Like, my margins are, are just like so exact. And the things that I put in place, like last year, I think I was. Um, just I was listening to this you guys did a similar panel last year and I, I learned more things that I wanted to put into place this year and we were sold out of all of our stuff by like Saturday afternoon so Sunday we were just designing ahead and I was out by 4 30 in the afternoon on Valentine's Day when I looked at my numbers we actually did 15 arrangements less than last year but two thousand dollars more so my average order went from 98 to 108. Like I hit like all of my measures of success, like being home every night by eight o'clock to put my kid to bed, making sure my team that we had a great time, my measures of success. I would say this was my most successful Valentine's I've ever had oh, in that. the face of also one of my employees totaled our delivery van. The week oh, that's before. right. That's right. As well. So that was a fun little like throw that in there wow <laughs> wow okay great insight I think the main thing with that the takeaway from everybody is just being prepared preparing as soon as you possibly can pre-booking all of that yeah, for sure. Now, um, before you move to the next one, Ellie, there's some questions or actually they're just comments that are about that one that um, Judy yeah. said. She she typed this in as she was listening to, um, I think, Amy. And she said, yeah, our customers expect our quality to be the same regardless of whether it's a holiday or any day. It makes it difficult as a shop owner. If farms have a different standard of quality than any day, I expect quality to be at least very close to any other short day or time of year. Should I really be put in a position to make an excuse to my customer at a holiday that they should also not expect the same quality they receive from us at any time? 
Judy, I don't, I don't think she's saying you should make excuses. She's just, you know, when I think about this and Amy, I'd love for you to even speak into this part because flowers grow every, you know, the beautiful thing about flowers, every flower is different. You can't really manufacture a per, you know, clone every single thing. It is, that's what makes them pretty. And you're going to have a few bad things, correct? Amy. Oh, I think, I think I read that comment and I think what I said was a little bit misunderstood. There's no farm in the world that lessens their standards for a holiday. Right. What I was commenting on was that the magnitude of flowers that we're processing through the same system yeah. at the same time is going to always have a little bit of window of fault. Sure. Um, we all, we, in addition to shops and everybody else, have additional employees, additional people, maybe somebody who isn't as seasoned as to grab a rose out of a line that the head isn't as, as big as it's supposed to be. And, and those things do trickle down to a shop, but never is it meant to be that way. Right. Um, that, that was what I was, was commenting on. Yeah. Oh, like and also, like, what is the, what is the lead time from the time that you plant or your, you know, plant the flat, the plant to the harvest. And, yeah. you know, we're all trying to predict the supply that's going to be needed six months in advance. And, you know, everybody on this call is like, we had a record year. So yeah. it's hard to predict what the supply is going to be at that point, Amy. Most definitely. By the time I you guys think about uh, what what you want to put in your designs. And I think that Bonda and Audrey, you can comment on this. When I give you a date of a pre-book or I give you a date of when your designs need to be done, you kind of give me a hairy eyeball, but, but farms have to be almost a year in advance yeah. preparing for a holiday. Yeah, I also think, um, Amy, you got cut off with your internet because I wrote down what you were, I, I was writing down what you said and then you got cut off, but you said you typically have less than half of a half of a percent of, uh, you didn't really, I didn't get to hear you finish that part. Of a credit, of a credit, like as of a quality problem. Hmm. Yeah, that's great. That would be a really yeah. good statistic, I would think. Yes. Um, so the, John Frecker said he too had a record Valentine's Day um, with product pre-booked well in advance. There were nightmare problems with the arrival of supply, of course, in February. And most of those were either weather or COVID related. Again, those are two things that are out of everyone's control. You know, we can't control the weather. We can't control a virus. Um, Judy said, yes, of course, flowers are very, so. Um, Joanne is asking, well, this is a question that we can get when it's at the end of Q&A. This is kind of a hot topic. It's about DoorDash. So let's move on, um, Ellie, to the next one. Okay. Um, and this question, you know, you might have already answered uh, at the last one. So you can just be quick if you, if you want. But what are the things that you did right this year? Amy, would you say planning? <laughs> Uh, definitely planning, definitely really talking, pre-booking up, like really forcing the pre-books, really, really making people aware how important it was to get themselves organized and get themselves organized early on. One of the things that we did not want to have, and, and Mike said it was a smooth holiday, we didn't want to miss trucks. We didn't want to miss planes. We wanted to have the product for the customers in place when they needed to work with it, not be rushing at the very last minute. And that is definitely all pre-planning. Yes, logistic pre-planning, but also um, talking to your customers, making sure they know uh, something's going to be late so they can replan their production, something like that. Mm -hmm. So to me, we did that right this holiday. The other thing we did right was we started an incentive package at farm level for our employees who 
would get tired. And, and like I said, it's a long holiday, but would get tired, didn't want to show up. Another farm would offer them five cents more so they wouldn't come back the next day. So we had a whole package that was pre-planned of how to incentivize people to come back to work every day. Um, things we never thought we'd have to do before we are now doing. Mm. Okay, mm. Mike? Yeah, uh, it sounds like Amy and I talked before this meeting, but or before <laughs> the Zoom call, but uh, we really didn't. But, but the reality is, yeah, uh, early pre-book was, uh, for sure, one of the right things we did. Uh, we've always done a pretty early pre-book, but this was earlier and we pushed really hard. So we made it uh, imperative to sales staff to, to try to give, convince their customers to commit early uh, so that we could be assured that we would come up with the product they wanted. Uh, we leaned heavily on our top partner farms, uh, for sure. Uh, folks like Amy and, and several others. And because we did that, we avoided a lot of logistics problems because those farms took all of this very seriously and, and were prepared ahead of time to get the product to us with little or no delay. Um, and then lastly, uh, one of the areas, one of the categories that we saw a really big increase was uh, pre-mades. And, and I'm not just saying that because we're on this uh, Zoom call, but the reality is that our, our pre-made sales were up over 30% for the holiday. And that's... Uh, that's significant for us, uh, particularly in a category that for a lot of years kind of floundered around. So um, uh, our, again, sales staff pushed it. We, we recognized it as an opportunity for flower shops to get more efficient uh, and uh, it, it took off. And uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'm jumping ahead to Mother's Day, but I anticipate that growing even more for Mother's Day. Awesome, Scott. Not much to add to that, but like like Mike, we saw a tremendous uh, increase in the pre-booked bouquets, pre-booked uh, or in the uh, bouquet area, both in greens bouquets, pre-mades, as well as regular bouquets, like from Amy. Uh, we saw that, and one of the things that we did in Antonio, uh, you really can't emphasize enough how much of a challenge logistics become. Scott, I think you're going through a bad area. Um, why don't you go move on and let's go back to Scott. Can I, can I speak into that from the stance yes. of our flower click bouquets? I'll sure. just I'll just reiterate, we pre-booked our flower click exclusive bouquets, pre-mades. Um, for Valentine's Day, it was the first week of December. For Mother's Day, it's going to be early March. Um, so the same, it forces our members to have to plan ahead, which, um, you know, I know that it was like pulling teeth to get those Valentine's orders to me on time, but it also allows the member to plan what their specials are going to be, what their anticipated inventory is going to be. And um, so I think it was... Um, especially when you have the pre-made bouquets that coincide with the arrangements that are on your website, um, it allows you to plan ahead and then have a little breather. I mean, yeah, be confident in what you have on your website and what your inventory is going to be. And um, I think that takes some of the pressure off. And I know um, that Julia and Janine, you guys, or Jeannie, you guys both um, have experience with that. Um, with the flower click bouquets. Yep, good ad. Um, I'm gonna go to Jeannie next. Um, I don't, things we did right this year. I think it was monitoring the orders that came in and not thinking ahead as to what might happen. Um, sometimes that happens to us in our flower shops when we have workers who've worked in the industry for years and they tell you about the holidays before. And I think just by paying attention to what truly was coming in the door and staying on top of the orders as they were coming in. Um, my supplier, I had to have my, in fact, the day before Thanksgiving, I did my pre-book for Valentine's. It was like, seriously, I need to do this today. And, and they're like, yes, if you want to get the product that you want. And, and my, my supplier um, is from Indianapolis. And um, she just takes care of me. And she said, you know, I know that you're going to be particular. 
Um, the pre-mades are amazing. And if anybody hasn't tried them, they certainly need to. Um, they sort of fit a niche for us. And it's interesting um, that you say that, and I'm gonna jump ahead a little bit, but Audrey, I have a dance recital Mother's Day weekend. Mm -hmm. And I think just the spark in my head here as we were listening to this is, this could be my little flower girls so, okay for dance recital versus- I have another chap who does the same. Yep, yeah, she ordered. So it's like, I'm, I think I'm gonna revise my order form because it's such a busy weekend to make this work. Um, so I, again, I think it's just thinking ahead and that seems to be the theme of most of this and you girls help us do that. Keep it, keep organized. That's great. Julia? Yes, just being um, well prepared and, you know, as a flower shop owner in the past, I've tried to, you know, do all the holiday prep <laughs> after hours on my own. And I didn't do that this year. I delegated specific tasks to specific people. And that really just put our level of preparedness on a whole new level. Um, I also worked really close with Cami and customizing the skinny for us um kind of replacing a few of the collections with some things that we get a lot of requests for from our customers like sunflowers and tropicals um and we still used floral click products we just kind of customized that skinny a little bit to include some things that we anticipate and had in our notes that people were wanting and asked for um and then I, <laughs> this doesn't relate to anything we've talked about so far, but we are really small shop. We're in 1200 square feet. So one thing that we did this year that was great was we ordered one of those pod containers that you do for moving and we yeah. just, they, they drop it off in our parking lot and we were storing vases and, you know, green, you know, uh, greens and everything out there. Um, and that really helped uh, get through the holiday for sure. And, um, and it wasn't that expensive either. Um, and then I wasn't gonna talk about the bouquets, but since you men mentioned it, um, it's really helpful when you have um, uh, temporary floral designers that don't typically work with you, you can really just say, okay, these bouquets and these bases are this price. So you can kind of, just kind of get them keeping up and keeping busy. Um, you don't have to be, you know, giving them specific formulas or, or even really photos. It's just, you know, make it look nice. And, um, and then also with inventory control. So if I have a stack of, you know, classic cosmopolitans and I can go over and count how many bundles I have and I'm like, okay, I, I know I have enough flowers to do these stack of orders. So mm -hmm. that's another thing that, you don't really think about when you're, but when you're in the thick of Valentine's Day, boy, it sure is helpful. I would just like to add, because I keep hearing it, um, but these shop owners, um, the retail shop owners are talking about the website Skinny and marking things sold out. And I just want to point out that they're saying that that was something that was that worked for them they did they weren't a victim to their website they took control of their website mm -hmm. um, of what they were going to offer since it is a i've said it before uh, but it's a menu for your customers when they're calling in or when they're ordering and they're kind of putting their website right first and then they're they're following as things get sold out marking it sold out skinning it down so i just keep hearing that that message so i wanted to point that out and Cami, for somebody who doesn't, you know, you guys mentioned the skinny, for somebody who doesn't know what the skinny is, can you just give like a two second thing on yeah. that? Yeah, so we, we first take Valentine's Day and we determine what do we want to offer at Valentine's Day. Um, and then we build just a couple categories like birthday, get well, anniversary, just so someone will have, you know, if they're looking for anniversary, they'll actually have a category to go to, but we basically just rinse and repeat and put more Valentine's Day products in those places. So it's a very slimmed down website, a very slimmed down menu for the customer to look at. And all three of the shops on this call have done that for years. And I mean, I just love hearing it really. I, all I it's hear is a that- blessing is what yes. it is. <laughs> 
Yes. <laughs> and then if you're like Abby, you get super su- excited when something sold out and you email Cammy, get it off, get it off. We're done with that one. And you, you get it off yet. <laughs> <laughs> and I think like, that's something too, that is important for people who've never experienced this. So you think if you're offering less product, how are you going to sell? But it's decreasing the amount of product that you have to carry in your store. You don't need to have 35 colors of roses for Valentine's Day, or you don't need to have all of the product that you may normally carry. The other thing that was so amazing to me is I messaged Cami at two o'clock in the afternoon and said, we can't do any more deliveries. And in 10 minutes, my website was turned around that they could still place their order, but it would be delivered on Tuesday. And it, it just happened so quick that the resources of being able to send that email and it happened so fast that you're just right there for us. It was awesome. Thank you. Love it. Okay, Abby, what did you do right this year? Okay. <laughs> so um, I like flower click merchandises my website but every year for whatever the reason i don't know why i love making up my own specials for mother's day and valentine's day but i take it, it starts for me and i wish my, i wish my wholesalers would come out with an earlier pre-book because this would allow me to not have to crunch everything into a two-week span for cammy it would be easier for her but basically i take and i did this for the past two years and it's been brilliant. Um, I take their recommended skinny and I make the little squares and I write down the price point that because flower click is so brilliant in the price points, the way that you're, that you're, it's not just about like, oh, this color palette sells the game that goes on with your clients when they look at the way that it's merchandised and they see these price points that they hit, that's important because having this 79 here and the 299 here is what drives them to the higher medium price point. So when I realized that the price points that that Flower Click is doing is a key part of the success, I decided, okay, I'm going to go with half flower click designs, and then I'm going to go the other half with my own creations because I buy vases from accent decor or this or whatever. So I mimic (laughs) their price points though. So I know like this is where they had a Simply Cosmopolitan for 65. I need to fill that price point in that space. So I try to keep my price points at their recommended, even when I pull in my own special. So that's one very like key thing. The other thing that we did this year is last year when I took notes about what I, I didn't just say what I liked. I said like why I thought it worked. So one thing that I noticed about the flower click bundles that I wanted to try to mimic as much as I could for my own specials was why was it helpful? And is it the fact that they're like rubber banded together? Well, like, no, because I take that off and I rearrange it. What it is, is it's having it all pulled together. So this took a little bit more work on the front end, but it paid off in a huge way. Um, We just processed all of our flowers. We do like a quick and dirty, like like a wedding event process, which is a little bit less careful than I would say like my normal retail flowers. And then after they processed the next morning, we went through and we pulled. So let's say for the renewal, I was going to sell 12. Well, if the renewal has four carnations in it, then I needed to pull 48 carnations. So we pulled our projections. So basically mimicked what they do in your bundles. And so is everybody following me? Is this making sense? Yes. yes. I'm even tracking with you. So well, that's <laughs> something. Um, <laughs> it is. So what I had was I had basically pulled when it was time for Keisha to make her sweet on you's. I said, okay, Keisha, go grab your sweet on you bucket. And she didn't have to go to the cooler, like pulling the ingredients that they needed. They were all there housed together. This also allowed us to separate. I call it gin pop, which is funny because I know that's a prison term, but (laughs) flowers that are not saved for like, Uh, are specials that are for designers choices or that can be used when you're doing a premium upgrade. I separate my gen pop flowers 
from my flowers that are like stem for stem accounted for in my projected sales for each special. So like this is as high level organized as I get, but we had, I would say the breakage of flowers was just so much less. We accounted for a couple extra stems for breakage or for you to have like a, like a butt rose that's not pretty, but having all of those things pulled, it made um, having like extra helpers who it's not even like, oh yeah, Liatris is the tall pointy one that's purple to go in the cooler. Like everything is pulled right there, just like it was in the flower click bundles and it just streamlined everything so i would say that was absolutely it's a little bit more work on the front end but we didn't have to buy the overages that we normally do and then you're not in that panic mode of well i'm seeing 700 roses in front of me but i gotta go count a bunch of stuff to see if we've actually sold 800 you know it can be very difficult to gauge before your arrangements are made of how much you actually have left in your shop to sell. Oh, so um, that's great. The that's other thing I would say, and just to not to belabor what like Amy was saying a little bit earlier, but I know that the entire industry is strained on a holiday like this. I'm just gonna be honest with you. I don't buy Lizianthus on Valentine's Day. You know, I love Lysianthus. I don't buy them on Valentine's Day. I don't have the room. I don't have the careful hands. I know that that's, if I'm having, if I'm struggling with delicates on my big holidays, maybe I'm not going to put stock into every single arrangement. This might not be a popular opinion from the wholesale house. So we're like, no, 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 we need to sell all that stuff. But I am very specific about, you know, I'm choosing the hardiest varieties of things to carry because I know that they're a little bit more consistent from the wholesalers and the growers because it's a strain for everybody. So of course you're going to see product issues more at a holiday like this. So be really smart about the types of things that you're bringing in, in such high quantities, you know, like get a little bit of that caviar for the high dollar orders, but, you know, really just thinking about your varieties is key. Mm -hmm. Abby, somebody asked how far in advance did you make those bouquets up of your special? Um, so we got most of our flowers in on Monday, Tuesday, had a couple like trickle things, you know, like sweet peas. I didn't get in until Wednesday. I didn't pull my sweet peas and put in the bundles because they're like really delicate, right? So it was like on Tuesday and Wednesday. It, didn't really take that long it was it was a two people were dedicated for like half a day to moving around some stem count because you're not buying so much over sometimes it was easier to say I know I got you know 30 extra white O'Hara's from what I need so it was easier just to pull the overages out and make like a shoppable section for my designers for their designers choices so it really didn't take that long Right. And yeah, maybe like a day after the flowers came in. Awesome. Thanks. Great info, Abby. Thanks. Okay, next. What would you what are the things that you will do differently next year? Amy? What are you gonna do different? <laughs> or for even for Mother's Day. <laughs> well, I, I think the most immediate reaction would be for Mother's Day because, mm -hmm. because it's coming right on our tails. And, and one of the things that, that I couldn't avoid was getting COVID on Christmas Day. So I kind of started a heavy part of my season sick and, and tired. And I think that would be the thing that I would want to do differently. Um, and I think Abby said at home to put my kid to bed. It, it's hard, you know, when you get to the 10th day or the, the 14th day or the, the 20th day to have a really long day. I think that you need to program your out time and, and come in fresh the next day instead of beating yourself up because there's so much more to do. Uh, and that's something I've been doing for 30 years and I still haven't gotten it right, but I'm going to keep trying to do it differently. 
Um, the pre-planning, I think um, the more time you put in to pre-plan and to pre-organize is going to help you with that exhausted period because we all get there um, and, and pushing through to the very end. This year, I happen to have a lot of new people that had never done a Valentine's Day before. So holding that up um, was, was a, a little bit extra. So that will be different next year because I won't have new people anymore. They'll have a full year of holidays under their belt. Wow. Okay, that is great. Um, Mike? Uh, well, a uh, couple of things, I guess, looking at just from a internal wholesaler approach here. Uh, we'll, we'll fine tune some of our delivery days so that we're maximizing service to most of our customers. Some of the things we saw from weekend deliveries was, you know, uh, particularly leading into the holiday, we expected higher volume than there was on a Saturday and Sunday for delivery. So we'll, we'll tweak some of that, uh, not so much for Mother's Day, but for Valentine's Day next year, uh, we'll look at how we change some of that up to, to offer better service and maximize space on, on the vehicles. Um, and then uh, the other thing is we'll, we'll start to continue to get away from generic mixes, uh, particularly when it comes to roses specific to Valentine's Day. Uh, what we've seen over the last few years is, uh, you know, working with farms who will allow us to custom pack and be variety specific because that's what I think we were hearing a lot of that even now, that's what our customers want, right? They want to be able to create a menu uh, with a specific item and, and be able to sell that. So uh, essentially we want to sell, change what we're offering so that we're selling what our customers want and not what we need to move. Scott? I think one of the things that we would continue to do and as we try to do it every holiday and that's continue to educate uh, our, our customers as to what's going on in, uh, in the real world as far as uh, whether it be production challenges, logistical issues, uh, what's happening in the weather patterns down in South America or California or Holland or wherever it may be just heighten the education to our customers so that they know what's going on. I, I, we, we, we really worked hard to try to do that for Valentine's day. Uh, and, and honestly, I don't know if everybody took it seriously from the get go. Not all, not all customers took it seriously, but I think they found out really quick that we weren't just blowing smoke. It was real. And, and the challenges that we faced were real. So I think that if we continue to heighten that education, whether we even do it on social media or through e-blasts or something like that to our customer base, uh, it, it'll just help them prepare better uh, so that they know what's, what's, what's sitting in front of them as the holiday approaches. Awesome. Jeannie. Um, our workroom went pretty smoothly. Um, we typically would leave a little bit of uh, the next day's work. Uh, maybe we'd leave the <coughs> night before with say 10 orders left for the next day. And this year we did not do that. Um, we had 100% of everything for tomorrow finished before we left. And my, my staff had no overtime this year. So that was really awesome that we did that. So something that we're gonna do differently is we're focusing on um, our delivery um, uh, module that we have on our point of sale. Uh, I'm going to learn how that works a little better. And we talked about that yesterday in our group. Um, and we're going to have one more delivery van, whether we think we need it or not. <laughs> I don't want any more 2.30 in the afternoon time crunches. Um, so that's what we're going to definitely do for Mother's Day. Um, I would rather have one extra person so that we don't have anybody rushing around at the last minute trying to figure out how we're going to get those last few deliveries done. Julia? Um, yeah, I plan on um, delegating and being more prepared even further. Um, I feel like, you know, each year you get a little bit better, but you'll never be perfect. Um, so I'm going to strive for that perfection <laughs> as best I can. <laughs> um, and then I, we haven't really talked about this, but um, I, I think simple is better. And that's what's great about the having fewer choices on, um, on the website for, um, for Valentine's Day. And I would like to um, apply that same 
tactic to our like enhancements or um, you know our add-on sales is just maybe having one um, enhancement gift package um, that's all done ahead of time. It's a box that you can easily slap a tag on um, and not a lot of, um, you know, people running around getting balloons and getting cards and getting all the all the stuff it kind of gets a little chaotic so it kind of reminds me of how it, things used to be when we still did our bouquets that way where you're running around to get you know get the tulips and get the thing you know so I was like maybe just having one simplified gift bundle add-on package um, is what I'm thinking um, for next year and if anyone has any feedback that does that already then it, it would be great to know how that works um and then maybe just customizing the skinny a little further. Um, I kind of like how Abby mentioned, you know, having a specific number of things planned for. Um, we struggle so much with space because um, we're a busy shop and a small square footage. So knowing how many arrangements I can fit in certain sections of the cooler, maybe that's where my limit will be. Um, cause we wanted to make more and, and, and work farther ahead and we just didn't have the cooler space to, to fit it in. So, um, and I always feel like as an owner, most of my time is playing Tetris in the cooler, trying to get everything to fit. So <laughs> having that, um, planned ahead of time might be helpful for next year, um, for, for my shop anyways. I don't know if anyone else struggles with that. <laughs> I would like to add to what uh, what Julia said, because earlier Joanne uh, Fernandez messaged in and said she loved the packages this year. She actually had me put up several products that were almost like a, a product banner, almost like a designer's choice banner on her website. But it was like a big bundle, like, a you know, dozen roses uh, with a stuffed bear with mylar balloon with a handwritten card like all of this one-stop shop from our from us and she wrote that that really worked well for her that the men love to just get one thing and know they're done you know and um so she's going to do that again this year she'd already commented on that and then she'd even emailed me earlier today she's um that there were only with the teleflora site that she has um, the customer cannot add more than three add-ons. So, and then, you know, sometimes people are getting a little carried away on Valentine's day and adding a lot. And sh she said the same thing. And I work with someone in Texas who does um, a package, like you're talking about, like just add this for $40 and you'll get all, you know, all these things. Mm -hmm. So I think that's a great idea. And I know a couple people it has worked for. Yeah. We have all the options, but there's like too many of them. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that's yeah. kind of, I'm thinking just simplified one package, um, that's prepared. Yep. I love it. Hey, Abby, you're up you mess with perfection I just can't <laughs> no, I have lots of things now I for each arrangement and I'll change up the way that we're making it I'm like okay this time you three are gonna assembly line this one and then like oh on this one I'll just have you assist me I need to I think remember what works and next year I know that having one person, at least for us, one person helping another one is really good. Like just having somebody there that can kind of like prep your flowers and then, you know, or having them like, okay, I'm putting in the, the roses and everything. Then you just come back in with the filler, like keeping the team smaller. I tried, I tried to add a lot of new designers this year. Like half of my staff had never been through a Valentine's day before. And so there was like, I wanted them to do the assembly line, but I didn't take into the account that I don't have the train staff who really knows how to do a four or five train assembly line where I've done that in years past. So I think that I, there were ways that I really could have thought more about the staff that I had and utilized them better. Oh, wow. Now the dog and the kid are going at the same time. I don't know. <laughs> um, but I also tried something this year too, that I know works for a lot of people, but it didn't, it didn't work for us. I have always done pre-greening um, and just doing it in the vases themselves. And I saw somebody talking about 
that they do bundles and like put them in a trash bag. And that sounded so good. It honestly didn't save me any time. And I still wanted to like rework them and add to them because some of them got wilty. And so I know that works for so many people, but I tried it and I didn't like it. I'm going to go back to like pre-greening just in the vases um, like I have done in years past. Um, and I definitely want to do more email marketing for pre-ordering. I've never done pre-calling. It's something that's like you have this laundry list of like, oh, I want to do this. When I looked at my notes from last year, one of the things that I said was you need to do more Instagramming and your social, like, you know, just working on that a little bit. And it just, it was one of those things, ran out of time, didn't get, you know, my email blast or pre-calling in. Um, but again, I, you know, it's like, what are you going to do? A total ban and your team's out with COVID, like, eh, yeah, it's fine. Next year will be different. It will be better. And I will probably order more flowers because there were a ton of people like we all got done and it was fine because we were tired and it was great to be done with Valentine's Day by like three, four o'clock. Like we did it. Our deliveries were on point, but there were a lot of people that had we ordered more flowers and put things we could have been there all day making up things for people who who were ready to like walk in and grab something so we really missed <coughs> at least an additional like two to three thousand dollars that day just by not having more flowers to make on the spot for people yeah, yeah. so yeah i'd buy i'd buy bundles i'd buy more bundles we sold out of our all of our bundles they were beautiful and we used them and then i wish i had more to give to like walk-in people so that's all awesome thank you um okay i know we are approaching so i'm trying to get through these faster um suggestions for better communications between the farm the grower the wholesaler and the retailer amy do you have anything on this Anything that you would uh, like to know, them to know? Well, I like to be very informative with my customers if we have to make a substitution. It's not always to the customer's liking. Usually I go to Vonda in this sense to say, I don't have such and such. These are your possibilities. At one mm -hmm. point at Christmas, there was some uh, special eucalyptus that we use in the bundles that wasn't available and it was midnight and I changed it to the spruce that we have at farm level and everybody seemed to be happy. So it does happen that sometimes I cannot preempt a substitution, but I think as you work with me and you work with farms that you trust, you trust that they're gonna do what's right for the, the quality of the bunch, the integrity of the bunch and the value of the flower. Awesome. Mike. Uh, so farm to wholesale communication here in Albany was really, really good this year. Um, it seems to get better every year, uh, which, which is great. So uh, any issues were dealt with up front and well in advance for the most part. Um, communication from uh, wholesale to retail. Uh, you know, I, I'll echo what Scott was saying uh, in his comments earlier there about uh, email blasts, social media blasts, uh, phone conversations, keeping our salespeople educated across the board on all kinds of issues that are, could be potentially occurring. Uh, the inventory system that we use here allows the salespeople to accurately tell their customers what trucks items are on, when they're expected to arrive, when they've been confirmed. So, you know, we're, it's really, really important to us here. Uh, we even use a texting program to, uh, uh, text blast uh, customers who've signed up for it to let them know new things that have come into our cooler, uh, hours of operation during holiday time, uh, you know, uh, delivery schedule changes, all that kind of stuff. So uh, I, we're trying to keep it moving forward and, and I think we're, we're getting better every year at it. So that's where we're at. Awesome. Scott, anything to add or? I just echo what Mike said. Yep. <laughs> Great. Um, Jeannie, I don't really have anything to add to that. Um, okay. Yeah. Yep. Julia, anything? Um, 
I had a I had a real problem getting containers, so I just wish we had some suppliers that were a little more um, um, helpful with um, base substitutions because um, I struggled with that a little bit. Um, also, just knowing what the best value is, I have a few wholesalers that are really good at communicating that, um, but some need improving. Um, and then I would really like my wholesalers to sell me more um, specialty items. Um, one of the things that we got in were those, um, I'm not sure if it's Venice or Venus, but the big pink proteas. And we were selling those in our store for $39 a stem and they just flew out the door. I mean, um, my customers just love things like that. So um, seeing more of the specialty items and, you know, you know, less of the carns and the palms and the things that they can get at, at a grocery store. Um, so, yeah. Okay, great. Abby? Yep. <laughs> Go to the next one there. Okay. How will Valentine's Day inform and influence your preparations for Mother's Day? I know that we kind of talked about that. I'm just going to open it up to anybody who wants to jump in here and give their thoughts. If they have anything. I think I did already. Um, yeah. More, more to add maybe from farm to, to a wholesaler would be um, logistics information. Uh, but I touched on that a little bit before so that your customer would be able to plan their their production or their their organization if they knew something was going to be late mm -hmm. okay yeah I, you know for us here more more of the above more of what we've been talking about all the way through this really all the things that worked uh, earlier pre-book probably than you've ever seen from us uh, for mother's day uh and uh, more pre-mades being pushed for sure so Great. All right, Lori. All right, we're at audience questions now. <laughs> These are questions, Ellie, that you know you had me put in last that <clears throat> people that are here gave us in advance. And so I think just like what Ellie was saying, whoever has the answer first, yell it out. So number one, this one was probably five or six different people wrote this same thing. Are there going to be shortages for Mother's Day? So this would be to the wholesale managers and probably Amy. I would say to this point, we don't anticipate uh, any shortages, but as we've been talking about, the earlier you uh, pre-book with your wholesale and, and the farms, uh, the more opportunity we have for success. Uh, and so I, and we have a lot of resources um, uh, th through Bill Doran that we farms that we utilize. Uh, so where we may have one farm that may struggle with being able to produce a certain item, we also have farms two, three and four that also may be able to help us uh, fulfill that order. So uh, I, I, but I can tell you where we're where we will struggle the most is the 11th hour call and haul orders yeah. that come in saying, well, I'm not sure what I'm going to get. I'll get back to you. And then all of a sudden at the 11th hour, you drop the hammer and say, okay, I need this. Well, we're certainly being set up for, for disaster. And so are you because right. um, uh, again, logistics out of, out of South America, logistics out of uh, uh, California and so forth has become quite the struggle. And, and, and that would be the biggest challenge. I think moving forward, the only shortage we are going to have is airplanes and trucks. We know that for sure. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so plan plan for success on that and order early, order often. Okay. Good. Thank you, Scott. That's a great answer. And um, number two, this is more for the retail owners that are on here. Um, this person, he was wondering how business for shops that stayed open on Sunday, the Sunday before Valentine's Day. He went on to say that he was open because he was working on stuff. So he flipped the open sign, I guess, and he only had like three or four people come in. So Jeannie or Abby or Julia, were any of you open? Um, we were open. Um, and I've been a florist for 25 years. I have never been successful at trying to encourage someone to have a holiday delivery early. Um, we did do a significant amount of deliveries on Friday uh, for people who were not going to be at work on Monday. 
is the only people that I feel like, and I tried to pay attention to that. We've offered incentives in the past and it just hasn't worked. Work, yeah. um, my staff chose to come in and work on Sunday so that we could be ahead of the game on Monday, not knowing, I guess we looked at Monday was gonna be a wild card. We could be busy or it could be quiet. And we were lucky it was very busy. So we were prepared to be busy. And so we were here anyways, the door was open. Um, I probably had seven or eight people. Um, you know, Cami handled it. My Google site said I was open. So I think, I think we had eight sales uh, okay. of people that day. We did have some call-ins, but I chose to not have my person uh, that would normally handle my phone come in on Sunday because I knew I would be here anyways. So um, it was good that we were here, but I would have hated to have set aside and thought that I was going to be tremendously busy for that day sure. because we would have truly been disappointed. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. A lot of um, our yeah, people are talking in the chat. Yeah. Our Flower Click members are chiming in. If you have... If, Please take a look at the chat. The chats are great. I can't read every one of them, but um, some are saying, yes, it was definitely worth it. It helped spread out deliveries. Um, Jen at Tilly's says, we're always all open on Sunday, but um, it was actually a slow day. And Kanye said she was open, but she was there. She was going to be there anyway. So um, she did have quite a few walk-ins. So I appreciate that. Um, question three, I'm not quite sure what they are referring to I'm hoping somebody else will they just said do you think box floral arrangements are a good sell for Mother's Day I'm wondering do you think they're talking about bouquets like from different wholesalers and we couldn't figure this one out Lori you and I yeah yeah add in if you if this was you or if you have any if you think you might know yeah if you wrote this add to it because I was kind of assuming um, boxed a fad call around looking for boxes today told us not a good seller Joanne okay well there you go she said no yeah, I wonder if what they're talking about is we have a lot of customers that come in and show us the pictures of like the pave design in a box okay um oh oh arrangements in a hat box, box. yeah wow. um Got it. But there's the traditional old school, like Pave. long stems laying down in a box, but then yeah. the more contemporary version where it's like, you know, roses pave in a box with the light. Right. I actually had a customer come in this morning and, and um, he, we're doing one of those for him on Saturday. Um, mm -hmm. And I told him it'd probably be like, he brought in this big box and I said, it'd probably be about a hundred roses to fill up that box. We can do it. So he, yeah. He wow. bought, prepaid for it. So, <laughs> yeah. Do you, uh, Julia, do you have a source or do, if anyone has a source to get those boxes, those like hat boxes with liners, put it in the chat. Jen said she can't find one. So. Yeah. Um, I've used floral supply syndicate, okay. um, not to be confused with syndicate sales. Syndicate. <laughs> okay. Floral supply yeah. syndicate, you have to be careful because not all of the boxes that they carry have the liners. So I'm one of those people that I'd rip them open there in the store and make sure that there's a liner yeah. in it before yeah. I purchase it. Um, so that's yeah. the only thing you might want to be careful of. Okay. Um, all right. So let's get to these next ones. Number four is a longer, um, I don't know if we're going to have time to go through this. This was actually a three-part question, but the gist of it is, it was a shop. They don't have any wire services. Um, what is the secret to having one and using it to your advantage? Um, they've been thinking about getting one. So if somebody has a super quick answer to that, great. If not, I think what I, I might do. do. Oh, you do. Go for it. Answer too. Yeah, it's a secret. So you're going to have to okay. DM me so that I can tell you what the secret is. <laughs> I would <laughs> no, I know there's plenty of Teleflora haters out there. I make lots of money, okay? And I have been with Teleflora for a long time. Yeah. yeah. There is a secret. It's and it's knowing your numbers and uh it's knowing how it can work for you in your area and that's going to be different for every mm -hmm. single shop. It, it, might not be telefloor for you. You might not have the right <laughs> demographics. You know, so I the best thing I can say is the biggest resource is to get on a call with Cami Martin because she knows <laughs> all about the wire services yeah, websites yeah. and she can walk you through. She has 
we have gone over every single wire service yeah. for me many, many times. I've talked to Vonda about it. Yeah. They're, the yeah. people that really hate them, I'm just going to say maybe don't know how to keep track of their numbers as, as well as they should. I think yeah. that a lot of the hate is misplaced. Yeah, That's all. we do have quite a few shops and Cami will agree to this that that use it to their advantage. Jeannie, you have Teleflora also. Julia, are you Teleflora? Yeah, and I my short answer is, and I'm sure that's what Abby was trying to get at, is I use it like a faucet. You can turn it on when you need it and you can turn it on when you off when you don't. Yeah, that's I like great. That. I like that. Thank you. I, I, I can't take credit for that. I heard someone else say that years ago and I'm like, that's genius. Yeah. That's exactly yeah. the way it should be a faucet. Yeah. Someone Very in the good. chat, uh, Joanne said that too. Shut them down when you need to and stick with minimums and designer's choice if you need if you need to switch to that. So you're in control, right? You yeah. you just have to right. don't and I'm control. gonna I'm gonna go back to the list and figure out who remember who wrote that. And I might uh, email them, Abby. I can email them your email address. I can always reach out. So <laughs> um here should be a fairly easy one. What flower food do you recommend to keep water from getting murky? Jeannie, did you say we, something? We use crystal clear. We use the liquid crystal clear. Liquid, okay. And Everybody we have well water, so that might make a difference too versus city water, I don't know. Okay. Either of you wholesalers have a idea for them? Mike? Uh, no, I, I would agree with crystal clear. Okay, and somebody else said, oh, Jan Taylor said aqua plus clear. Andy says floral life liquid crystal crystal clear. So it sounds like that's the one. Um, all right, this question. I've always worked directly with my wholesaler instead of buying directly from the farms. What are the pros and cons, if there are any, of buying direct? And how would I even start? I want to go to one of you wholesalers. <laughs> what are there pros and cons? I didn't or not. You want me to? You want me to start with all the cons? Do we have time? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know what? We we want to be real here. We want to ask the questions and help people. And so, what 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 are your thoughts on this question? Uh, so, it's it's a difficult question. So, uh, <laughs> far, buying farm direct. There's a lot of there's a lot of mis misperception on what is farm direct and what isn't. For one thing, so um, if you're buying farm direct at an actual farm versus buying from a vendor in Miami. Those are kind of two different things. So, um, you know, cons are that you have to be really good about making sure that you have factored in all of your costs and you have a reliable way of transporting the product to you or logistics. Mm -hmm. uh, the pros are in some cases you can save some money uh, what you have to weigh out, I think, is, uh, well, you can save some money. And, and in theory, if you're buying at farm, you can perhaps improve quality to some extent. But what you have to weigh out is that uh, the, is all of that effort worth the, the cost of that extra labor to look into and be sure that you're getting the very best value across the board? Is it worth all of that effort, or is it better to rely on a uh, high quality wholesale house near you who can provide you with pretty much the same experience? Yeah. Well, and, and, and to add to that with my, from what Mike is saying, there's, I think your biggest challenges uh, of, of buying direct uh, at, at the retail level is how are you going to get the product there? And when the product arrives, there's, I mean, you're you're gonna if you're gonna buy truly farm direct, as Mike was saying, you're you're going all the way to Quito or Colombia, so you have to find out how you're <laughs> gonna get that stuff into Miami, let's say, and then how are you gonna get it from Miami to you, and if if FedEx or Air is that, well, you are you're facing you know facing several weather challenges that's gonna really stress that product out when it's flying at thirty thousand feet. Uh, or if it's in a FedEx box and or a UPS box and that product's going to come to your doorstep, that's great, except how long did it ride on that truck before it got to your flower shop? 
and dealt with the temperatures there, whether they be 15 degrees during Valentine's Day or 85 degrees, 90 degrees during Mother's Day. So there's a, there is a challenge with that. And then I guess the final step to that is, so you bring your product in a couple days early and you open up the box and it got hot. Now, how are you gonna to respond to that at your level? Now you've got, to re, you've got to contact your farm two days, three days, four days before you need to use that product. And you've got to jump through hoops and they've got to jump through hoops to try to get that product there and keep your fingers crossed that it doesn't happen again because now you're really against the wire of production. If you're dealing with a wholesale house, uh, in most cases, they're gonna be able, if not same day by the next day, be able to find a solution for you to help replace that product or uh, get you something similar uh, within you know, 24 hours, they'll be able to turn that around and make it right for you. So I, I, I think that you, you um, and, and some of the volumes that you have to buy at a farm level mm. in order to that work. There's some pretty big volumes in order to do that. And I can tell you if, if you're going to work out some type of a deal through one of the, the, the floral transportation services, they have some pretty big minimums now too. Yeah. Uh, and freight that they've instilled and some of them in excess of $500 just on freight that's not on your flower invoice that's just on the freight cost to get it to yeah. you so it's really it's the game has changed in that world yeah I would also think and I don't know much about buying direct um, if I was owning my flower shop, I would want a whole, I would want a, my sales rep who I would have a relationship with that I could either be excited about or yell at or like, hey, fix this. Because I think if you're doing it on your own, like you said, if you get them all in and they're, they are moldy or you're, it's not like you can just call up the grower in another country and they can get a, something else out there, well, right? It's, it's exactly like what we tell our brides when they ask us why I don't buy my DIY wedding flowers. Exactly. <laughs> it's the same thing. Working, yeah. When you cut out that middleman, that is your cheap insurance. Yeah. That someone is there that you can call. Yep. And I'm, I'm on the phone with my rep. I say, these are bad. I need credit and I need new ones tomorrow morning. And you hang up the phone. You don't right. do it like that. But that's the end of it. You are paying for a service. It's the same service that you're expecting your clients to pay you. Yeah. It's not that you can't work with great farms, but there is a little bit of, and I'm sorry, I think hypocrisy when florists want to, you know, yell at our customers for cutting us out when they go the DIY route. And then we want to cut out the wholesalers, yeah. you know, we need yeah. to protect them as well I think yeah. no that's a that's was that a creepy no Todd and Mike were you paying Abby for that I'm smiling. I'm smiling. thank you Abby checks in the mail I was just gonna say that <laughs> checks in the mail <laughs> but Actually, she likes go ahead a Kim. lot of the chats a lot of the chats are mimicking her you know yeah. can't get can't get them in one day from the farm. You yeah. know, a lot of a lot of the chat is saying the same thing. So you'll yeah. want to read that. You need a you need a somebody that's going to have your back, and and you need to you know the wholesale houses need to provide good sales reps, and then the shops need to have great relationship with those people, right? It's a it's a partnership. So anyway, we all have we all have our specialties. Your your specialty is taking what we provide in bulk and turning it into a beautiful finished product and our specialty is getting that product for you and yep. allowing us to do that so everybody has their own special niche in this whole this whole supply chain yeah no okay um, that's a great way to end the questions um, yeah. um and i'm gonna say this because we do have so many more for those of you that we didn't get to ask the question that you posted in registration we will get you a follow-up email we will come email you by Friday with the answer to that question. So good. Awesome. All right. Uh, that is it. We are way behind time. Just want to throw this up here. This is our podcast. Bonda and I do a podcast every week. It is free. You can download it on Apple, Google, Spotify, Stitcher, any of the things. Um, we try to keep them relatively short, no more than 30 minutes. And we talk about flowers and fun stuff. So we'd love for you to take a listen.
And if you want to connect with us, you can get on our Instagram, our Facebook page. You can email Cami or myself with any questions. Um, we have a, a Facebook group called the Business of Pleasure of Flowers, which is back to this. It, anybody can be in it. We do have a Flower Click members group. I want to tell you right off the front, you have to be a flower, part of Flower Click to be in it. So don't be offended if I don't let you in, but you're welcome to be in this one. Um, and this is, this is Ellie saying <laughs> good luck. <laughs> So thanks for joining us, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Thank you. Good wanna, luck. Thank you for well, our thank panelists you. for joining us. You guys are awesome. Rock stars. Yeah. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Yep. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.